Welcome to our next video here by Howard Piano Industries. Um, today we're going to be showing you how to um, prepare and, and to make uh, hot hide glue for the purposes of using it for piano repair. Hide glue, the hot version of hide glue is used uh, in a lot of repairs uh, traditionally such as uh, repairing um, uh, or reinstalling new hammers, uh, you know, you can glue um, action parts uh, together that are broken, or a lot of different, um, uh, a lot of different um, places that you can use uh, hot hide glue in, in piano repair. Um, traditionally, it's used; it's a it's a preferred glue, uh, such as replacing hammers, because uh, you can um, take the you know separate the glue, um, you know, at the, at the point that it comes that you need to replace the hammers again. So if you're doing a repair where it's something that's going to have to be done again and sometime in the future, um, that makes it a good, good glue, glue to use. Um, uh, oftentimes in the past it's been used for such things as as gluing on felt and leather and and uh, that type of thing and um, but uh, but now you know the glue for that is uh, we recommend PVC glue because it's a lot easier to use hot hide glue you have to you know you have to prepare it there's a little work as you'll see in the video to get it ready for use so it's uh, mostly um, primarily used in, in the shop environment, you know, if you've got a workshop or whatever that you're, you know, because you have to, you know, get, get the glue, you know, let it set overnight before you heat it up um, while the glue crystals uh, soak in the water. So we're going to show you how to do that today and, um, you know, show you the process. Uh, you know, one thing you need is um, a something to heat the glue. Here we, I've, I've was able to find a number of years ago a, a crock pot or a, a hot pot here that um, uh, heats the glue. You want to make sure you get it to the correct temperature. Um, basically, generally they say you know around 130 to 140 degrees is um, is a good uh, temperature to to be at for hot hide glue. Um, you know, so I've found a um, a pot that 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 will heat it. If I set it on the low setting, it'll it'll put it at that at that temperature. Um, you know, if you can't find one, it's it's that's that is at in that correct uh, temperature range. Um, you know, it works if you can find something with a uh, with a dial, um, something that uh, you know you can you can uh, has a variable adjustment on it that you can adjust the the you know a little bit at a time. Um, you know, so so those are some options to think about when you're looking for a pot. You know, they do sell glue pots. Um, they tend to be expensive. I think this one I only paid about ten dollars for. So, I found something that was a little less um, expensive or a more economical option that were that's been working for me for a number of years. So, um, well, what I do is what I did in the beginning is um, I would uh, I would put the glue when I first started using it. I would put the glue inside the crock pot, but then I found I had so much extra glue at the end because you don't really end up using that terribly much glue for one job. So um, and it's not uh, necessarily good to uh, reheat it too many times. You know you can you can reheat it you know two or three times depending on what uh, what kind of thing you're working on. For hammers, you always generally want to use fresh glue, but um, you know if if it's other things like felt or or some of those other things that um, you know you can you can reheat it. Um, a couple times, but every time you reheat it, it, it does lose some of its uh, strength. So, um, you know, so it's not recommended to reheat it too many times. Um, you know, so what we're going to do here is, um, and, and what I did was to solve the problem of having too much glue at the end is I just took a cup and uh, put it down inside the crock pot, and then I've got water down inside the, cr the crock pot, um, the pot f that... Um, will heat up and then heat the cup inside the water. So the water gets set down inside uh, the water inside the pot. Okay, so it's a small, and you can even use a smaller container than this. And I use porcelain because you want to have something that's non-stick. I've seen somebody, you know, I've seen somebody else that uses a small uh, tin can. Um, that works too, that way you can just throw it away when you're done. Um, but if because it's because this one's porcelain, I can um, uh, you know clean it out real easily. So 
um, and I don't use as much glue uh, this way because it's a little smaller um, container. So what we're going to do, I've got uh, my hide glue crystals here and um, I'm just going to put some of that inside the cup and you know you're you're, you're still going to end up with probably more than you need but if you want to get the if you want to put you know at least probably you know fill the container at least a third full of uh, of crystals um, that should be a good good amount to get you started and of course you don't you want to make sure that the water level around you know around the container that you're putting the glue into is at least as high as where the um, where the glue level is going to be so I've got to make sure I have enough enough water in there um, and then once you once you do that so we'll show you here we've got the glue crystals inside the um, inside the cup and then what you're going to do is you're going to take take water and basically you know some it's uh, people say well how much water should I put well what I learned and what I've always done is I put enough water in and and um, this is a little bit uh, careful that you, you want to be careful on this is put enough water so that it just just goes over the level of the glue and, and you want to do that right away now one thing is as as you let the water sit you're going to notice the glues the water is going to soak in but initially you'll pull the put the water in and uh, just get it to the level so it's just just barely above the the level of the glue and like I say that's going to soak in so you're going to say oh I must need more water but it doesn't uh, you know you want once you set that initial level that should be the the correct amount so I'm going to pour the water in until it just uh, goes over the level of the glue okay and then and I can see um, it, that soaks in right away. In fact, I probably need to put just a little bit more in because I didn't. There we go. Just a little splash to make sure it gets in all the crystals. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let that set for several hours to maybe overnight. Like so, if you're going to do it, if you want to work in the morning um, on something and you want your glue, just uh, you know, just do this part of the step uh, the night before. And then by the morning it'll be ready. But let it set. You that that water needs to soak into the into the glue crystals. Um, and then once uh, once it's uh, you know soaked in, then then you can go back the you know in a few hours or the next day and uh, heat it up and and it's it'll be ready to use. So th that's the step we're going to do now. And uh, in just a bit here we'll come back after the glue's had some time to to soak in or the water's had time to soak into the glue crystals and we'll heat it up and show you how that works. So here we are, we've come back, we've let the um, the glue sit for a while, um, soaking up the water, the glue crystals. Um, so we're at that point of being, being ready to turn it on. I can see that the, um, the glue crystals have soaked up the water and um, it should be ready to turn on to get it heated. So we've, again, it's been several hours since we put the water in. Um, again, we want to make sure the water level is at least as high as the level of the glue in the in our cup or the container there. So then I'm going to turn it on. I'm just going to turn it on to low. Um, in the past, I have turned it to high just for a little while to get the water heated up a little bit faster and get the process moving a little bit quicker. But you do have to be careful that you don't, um, you know, let the temperature uh, get too high too quickly so that. Um, it overheats the glue because that can break it down quicker and it won't be as effective then. So um, so we've turned it on. Uh, now we'll come back maybe about an hour or so roughly and and uh, let it um, let it dissolve and, and um, melt so, so that it heats up so that we can use it. So we'll come back in just a moment when that's ready for us. Okay, well we're back here with our glue all heated up and uh, ready to use. Um, so I'm going to check it. Uh, sometimes you do have to make adjustments. You know, you set the water level when you first pour it in, um, but um, sometimes you have to add a little water if it's a little too thick. Um, you know, it's better to err on the side of too thick because obviously you can't make it. Um, 
make it thicker once it's too thin, but if it's too thick, you can always add more water. So um, we're going to check it and see see how we're doing with it. Um, now what I usually do is uh, usually have a, I've got a piece of waxed paper here that I use to set my utensils on because um, uh, it doesn't stick to it. So if you stick it on a paper towel or something like that, it's gonna it's gonna stick. But um, so wax paper works pretty good. So we're gonna check this here and um, see if we can get you a little closer here to take a look see what our glue looks like there we go so as you can see that's the consistency that's mm, close probably a little too thick um, for what uh, well that's probably pretty close and pr pretty close to what we want so um, if anything, you can add a, add a little bit of water. Uh, you know, once you start using it, uh, try to see what it's like. But um, now, what I do is um, I've got a because we obviously want to keep it mostly covered, but um, but we still obviously have to access it. What I did is I made this board. I just took a, a piece of um, this is a one by one by lumber uh, or three quarter inch lumber that I used, and I uh, cut a square out. And uh, what I did then was um, put a hole in it so that I can access my um, access the glue with the with the glue brush from from through the hole. And uh, so most of it is covered, but there's enough room for me to stick a stick stick that in there um, because otherwise I have to. Keep the cover on it. Take the cover off, or and dip my brush in there every time I want to use a brush. So then that can be um, not very convenient. So so this is a this is a nice thing here. And the other thing I use um, if I have to stir it while um, while it's going, uh, I just use upright hammer shank here. So we can do this and, and stir it as needed. And I can use this. I can even set um, set my stuff up on here if I need to or my brush I can leave my brush now the one thing is one thing uh, nice about the hole is that um, you know you can you know once you once you dip your brush in it to get your glue um, and then use it to for whatever um, you know you can leave the brush here if you have to set it down and because it's over the hole where the steam is coming out it's pretty much going to keep it so that the glue doesn't um, doesn't harden up on the on the brush for the most part. Uh, for for a lot of th things with hide glue, I like these little these are just little cheap uh, kids paint brushes that I got from the from the craft store. Um, so I you know I buy them like in a package of a hundred. So the, that's often what I'll use, especially if I'm doing hammers or something. If I need to brush glue on something larger, I use these these glue brushes which these are ones we sell in our store um, so if you're like doing felt uh, putting glue on felt this is a this is a good uh, brush to use you can fit that down inside the hole um, and get a bunch of glue because if you're doing felt you're gonna need to get more glue at once so so that's a that's a good brush to use when you're doing that so um, so basically that's it that's how you prepare the glue um, again, you know, and, and as you, if you're, if you're working with it for a couple hours, you know, you want to ch check it and stir it with, um, you know, again, I use a hammer shank or you can use anything that'll fit down inside the hole to stir it. If it gets a little thick, which it will tend to do, um, over time as you, as you're using it, if you, especially if you're working with it for an hour or two, um, you might have to add a little bit of water, but just keep an eye on the consistency to, keep it uh, and you get a feel for it as you as you start to use work with it and, and use it more but that's how how you set it up it's a little more it's obviously more work than just using uh, cold glue out of a bottle like PVC glue or there's even cold hide glue but cold hide glue doesn't work as good as as the hot hide glue so um, it's definitely a good strong glue um, for uh, for piano repair um, work and um, it um, you know, it, it's it's someone that can be 
taken apart, you know, down the road if, if need be. So that's the advantages of, of using hot hide glue, and it is a very traditional uh, type of glue for piano repair work. So if you have any questions about it, just let us know. Um, you can give a, leave a comment or um, contact us. Our website is howardpianoindustries.com.